We're going to be talking about different ways to multiply. This is lesson 12.7, and it's kind of a review of what we've learned so far. We've learned many ways to multiply. We can use counters. Here we have two groups of three, so that's two times three equals six. And we can use repeated addition. Here we have a group of five gems and another group of five gems, and five plus five. Well, that's the same thing as two times five, and that equals ten. And we can draw a picture. If we have three chickens or three birds and they each have two legs, that's six legs, isn't it? So we can solve and draw or write to show how we solve these. So there are four bird nests. There are two eggs in each nest. So how many eggs are there in all? We can use any one of these methods to find the answer. So we can draw a picture or we can use repeated addition or we could use counters. If there's four birds nests, we can make four birds nests and there's two eggs in each nest. Now we can count them, can't we? We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have four groups with two in each group. We have eight eggs. Make sure we label that it's eggs. See? We also could have done two plus two plus two plus two equals eight and used repeated addition. How about this one? There are three trees. There are five birds in each tree. So how many birds are there all together? Well, there's five in one tree, there's five in another tree, and there's five in another tree. And we can add these up. This is repeated addition. It's the same thing as having three fives. We have three times five. We can skip count by five. Five, 10, 15. Or we can just do five plus five is 10, plus five more is 15, see? So we can choose a way to find each product. Remember, product is the answer in multiplication. So we can choose a way to find each product, and we can draw or write to show our choice. We can use addition, we can use counters, we can draw a picture. So here we have three times four. We can do four plus four plus four. We have a four three times, see that? And four plus four is eight, plus four more is 12, so three times four is equal to 12. 12 is our product. Here we're using counters. We have 4 times 4. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 rows of 4. So each row has 4 trapezoids in it. We have 4 times 4 and that's 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 4 more is 12 plus 4 more is 13, 14, 15, 16. 4 times 4 is equal to 16. Here we have six times one. That means we have six groups of one. So we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. See? Now, when we're multiplying by zero, any number that's multiplied by zero will have ze a product of zero. The, the answer will be zero. So look at this. If we have two boxes, and each box has zero cookies in it, how many cookies do we have? Well, zero. There's no cookies in the boxes. So two times zero equals zero cookies. See? If we had four fish tanks with zero fish in each tank, how many fish do we have? Zero. Four times zero fish is zero fish. There's no fish in the tanks. So, it doesn't matter how many tanks we had, if there's no fish in them, we're going to have zero fish. See? If we had 99 boxes of cookies and all 99 boxes had zero cookies in them, we'd still have zero cookies. See? And if we had zero fish tanks, if there were no fish tanks with no fish in them, well, zero times zero is zero. If you have no groups, with nothing in each group, you have nothing. See? You have nothing. 
Now, on the other hand, when we're multiplying by 1, any number multiplied by 1 is going to keep its identity. The identity of this number is a 2, isn't it? He's a 2. If we multiply him by 1, he's going to stay a 2. He's going to keep his identity 2. He's not going to get a new name. He's not going to change to a different number. He's going to stay the same and keep his identity. See? We multiply 3 times 1, and that's going to be 3. He's going to stay the same. 4 times 1, the 4 stays the same. 5 times 1, the 5 stays the same. And it doesn't matter what number we multiply times 1, it's going to keep its identity. We could even do 80 times 1, and that's going to stay 80. We could do 95 times 1, and that's going to stay 95. We could do 9 million times 1, and it's going to stay 9 million. So anytime we multiply by 1, it is the same number that we're multiplying by. It keeps its identity, okay? And anytime we're multiplying by 0, the answer is 0. So those are probably the easiest ones to multiply by, right? 0 and 1, that's really easy to remember. Okay, in our next video, 12.8, we're going to start talking about division and what division means. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button because it does help me out. It tells YouTube that my videos are helping people. And I'll see you next video. Bye.